Is this is this the instant classic you've been looking for? I don't know. Should we watch the video and find out? Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Check it out. Welcome to Ludus Volpez. My name's Kirsty. I'm Phil. You join us as we run through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Sabika. I have raved about how many people should go to Granada and visit the Alhambra Palace on two videos now mm -hmm. uh, because it's a beautiful place to visit. And I was attracted to this game because it was about constructing the Alhambra Palace on the Sabika Hill. And that was exciting. But has the game given what we hoped it would? So mm. from Ludenova, Jim and P. Mellon. Um, Jim and P. Mellon, the guy who gave us Bitoku last year. Bitoku. Which we loved. We thought it was a fantastic game. Yeah. So has he lived up to his reputation mm. with Sabika or not? And that is a question we hope to answer for you in, in this video. In video. So... First of all, we'll go down to the table and we'll have a quick look at how the game plays. We'll then go into a demo round and we'll come back with our good, the bad and the uglies on Sabika. See you down there. Down there. Okay. You know how big our table is and this game almost fills it. So, word Six of warning. Six foot by four foot. <laughs> word of warning. This is, the board takes up a bit of space. It's the same size as the double bed, this table. Yeah, it is the same size as the door bed. Not the board, that's not the same size as the door bed. So, for Sabika we have a grand board, and the board is fantastic because it holds pretty much everything you want to play mm -hmm. the game. So, as we go through the board, we'll give you a quick tour of the board, I think that makes sense. Yep. And we'll have a look at the player area, and then we'll talk about what you can do. Yeah. So, at the top, um, we've got the narrator track, and the narrator track is our round counter. It also triggers some intermediate scoring, which is quite nice. Um, we've then got two areas. This area is now empty because we've moved out of era one. Um, over here we've got major constructions that we can build and there were some major constructions here during era, era one, but that has passed as we get past turn two. Below the major constructions we have got storehouses and these storehouses have got wonderful abilities that trigger um, and you can collect them in various ways. Below that, on this side of the board, we have minor constructions, and on this side of the board, we have minor poems. And those minor poems um, can be carved into the walls of the constructions you're making, um, and the minor constructions sort of beautify hmm. the palace you are building. And at the bottom of this board, we have a um, major poems track. There are four of those in a two-player yeah. game. There's basically two per player in any in most of the games you're going to play. Um, at the top, very top, and I missed it out at the start, and I apologise for that, is the uh, Sultan's Influence track. And you'll see our little bags at favor the top. Track. Sultan's Favour track. Mm. You'll see our little bags at the top, and notice that Kirsty's marker, the blue one, is much further along than mine is. I have, I have carried the, the favour of the Sultan not as much as she. Um, and, I aimed, please. And that's that's basically everything on the board. No, it's not. What? No, it's not. Okay, do you want to talk about that bit then? <laughs> you mean the you mean the beautiful shipping map across the bottom? Yeah. Whereby okay, the Mediterranean whereby, is laid out in front of us. Yeah, whereby you um, collect uh, goods and deliver them to the beautiful cities across the Mediterranean. You've also got the minor small fact, you know, it's virtually impossible to see on the board, which I can understand why Phil missed it, the rondel. Oops. I say rondel, I say rondels. There are three rondels in this game. There is the outside rondel, of which your large... Um, Master builder token. Yes, these dudes here, basically. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, they basically do minor builds, larger builds you've then got uh, which are there and there you've then got two quarries which give you wood and gypsum Resources. or marble you've then got storehouses and you've also got the market whereby you can gain two coins and do two trade actions as you see here the center rondel 
you to use your merchant for allows you to uh, do a boat move allows and you export goods yeah yeah and export board, goods yeah it allows you a can't remember what this one's called consolidate consolidate action, action <laughs> that's it and that is whereby you sign a like trade agreement with the city yes uh, so you you gain constant um, resources from that uh, you've got this uh, section here which allows you to gain the benefit of any city that you're in in one of them as well as upgrading uh, two different resources so for example you can see this here is sugarcane it would upgrade it to a bag of processed sugar into the last rondel here this is where this little poet. lady poet is and she basically allows you to inscribe a poem. She allows you to reactivate an already written instant reward poem. Or she allows you to gain three coins plus a coin for each pair of um, poems that you already have collected. You'll note that round the edge of these three rondors here, there are um, secondary um, turns which you can take which are actions which you either pay to take the resource um, which is either a marble, gypsum, wood or the resource if it's here. If it's already been taken by another player it is upgrade um, a resource that you have and if you're this side of it it's free or cheaper and if you're this side of it it's more expensive. The final thing you'll note in the middle of the board are so I'm playing teal and Phil's playing white. But who are these gold yes. people, you may say? Now, the gold people are the Sultan's workers. And they're there just to keep an eye on you, make sure you're working, and make sure you're paying your taxes. They get in the if way. If you land in a space where the Sultan's worker is, you have to pay a coin. It's a bit more than that. If you land in a space with any other worker, you pay a coin for each different coloured worker that's there, including the Sultan's worker. Yes. So theoretically, in a four-play game, you can pay four coins to visit yep, a space. Just literally to land in the yeah. space. Um, so the rondel is your action selection mechanism, and each of your um, characters on that on the rondel can move two spaces for free in a clockwise order. After the first two spaces, they're going to be paying a coin for each space plus a coin for if they step on another worker, uh, because trampling workers comes at a price. Yes, it does. Um, and. The game plays across five rounds in total and you are going to score victory points in the game from various things. So these major poems are sort of big end game scoring points. So you can get up to 14 points pretty much per one of these, 14 to 16 points. You're also, every time you build something, you're going to score victory points. But you can choose how many victory points you score. So if you build a minor construction, um, you've got a little key here which says you must start with the resource in the bottom of the minor construction but then you can add another two resources to it to beautify it but all the resources must be different so if you spend a wood you'll get two victory points but if you beautify it with a marble and a ceramic you're going to get another seven victory points giving you a total of nine victory points just Beautiful. for building one of these it's exactly the same for the major constructions you'll get that benefit uh, but you, with the major constructions, you have to start with gypsum, which makes yes. gypsum the cheapest resource, but also one of the more useful resources. Mm -hmm. Poems can be beautified by one additional item. So even writing carving, the poems will give you extra points during the game. Um, the major poems are just cost money. You can't score extra points from them, but they are big end game scoring. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one end game scoring uh, card that's shared amongst all players towards the end of the game. Um, and that's taking into account the fact there will be interim scoring for various other things as well. Let some of the storerooms give you victory points. victory points. Victory points are coming thick and fast in this game in yes. a way. But actually, your challenge, I think, in the game is to make your move as efficient and effective as possible. Mm -hmm. So trying to maximise each of your workers on this rondel. You can also, if you want to, if your workers are feeling lazy, you can bring them back to your workshop on your player board and you get three coins. Now, given how hard money can be to come by in this game, mm -hmm. three coins is a lot, but the, 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 the Sultan is disappointed in you and you will lose a victory point if you do so. Basically, your worker's gone off sick and he's paid you, but he's not upset. He's a bit upset that you've done it. Yeah. 
Um, Once you're back in the office. <laughs> indeed. At the end of each turn, you're going to pay some prior points. And if you can't afford to pay the prior points in your little prior tracker there, you're either going to pay in coins, and it's a two for one, or you're going to pay in these little um, seal tokens, which mm -hmm. is a one for one, or you can pay one for one in victory points as well. So mm. that can cost you. Um, so that is a game. Uh, last thing to talk about is the poems. The poems have got two sides. They've got a blue side and they've got a red side. Red sides offer instant rewards. Blue side is ongoing or income. So the blue side, the both sides are incredibly valuable, to be fair. Incredibly yeah. valuable. So that's the basics of how the game works. Now I'm going to go through a detailed little explanation, otherwise we'll be here all evening. <laughs> um, what I will say about it is the iconography is helpful and will get oh. you through those rules yeah. quite nicely. We'll talk about that later. But for now, should we do a demo round? Let's do it. So at the start of the round, we have to choose a starting player. Or technically, we look at the prior track and see who's highest. Kirsty is highest. Now Kirsty gets to choose who the starting player is rather mm. than just being the starting player. Yes. So um, I believe I will mess myself up already, I can see. Um, <laughs> I will begin by um, moving my little poet lady, one, two. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing is line it down so I can keep track of who's gone where. Now, there's a sultan's worker there, so I must pay a coin to the sultan to be in the presence yep. of their workers. And I'm going to take a poem. Now, the poem I'm going to take is a uh, end game scoring poem, um, and that's going to cost me four coins plus however many of the grey poems I've got. Now, at this stage, I don't have any, so it's just four coins. So, so one, two, saying, three, four. We're saying any player can only ever have a maximum of two grey poems. Yes. So, the maximum one will cost is five points. Yeah. And I'm going to take this one. Which is shocking, really, given that her Sultan's Favoured bag is almost all the way across the track. So that's going to be 15 <laughs> points uh, when she gets one more major construction, which I'm if guessing will happen. If you can. Oh, mm -hmm. you've got gypsum there. I wonder what mm. that's going to be spent on. Um, <laughs> and actually, we've got two turns left, two rounds left in the game. So both of us are going to be looking to these now to, um, to sort of take the opportunity. So I will... Sorry, I will. Um, I will move my uh, poet to here. And I'll pay a coin because I move three spaces, mm -hmm. and I'm going to re-trigger this red poem here, which allows me to take <laughs> a storehouse action. So there are four storehouses out. I can take one of those storehouses, and I am going to take this one for various reasons. So this one is going to allow me to take a wood or a gypsum, and. Also, it's going to give me two market actions, which is just detail here on the player, but on the board. The other thing that's going to happen is I'm going to cover something. So I'm going to cover this one. So that now gives me, I'm covering two victory points there. So I gain two victory points for placing that. I'm actually going to have to stand up now to reach over the table to place my two victory points on the board. Um, now I get to take my marble or gypsum. Let's take a, oh, I've got I gypsum. I think it's gypsum or wood, that one. Oh, gypsum or wood. So I'll take a wood. Might actually work out better. And then I get to take two market actions. Um, so I'm going to sell my sugar for three coins. Processed sugar, not just sugar cane. Not just sugar processed cane, it's sugar. processed sugar. That's the good stuff. That's the natural sugar. And then as my next move, I'm going to spend two. Two to buy a marble. Mm -hmm. Two to buy some marble. Who will buy my beautiful marble? That's lovely. I know, I try. Um, so that was part of my action. I now get a secondary part of this action, which is carry out a storehouse action. I can then also carry out an action on somebody else's storehouse. So I look at the other player, and the action here is to take two prior points, which I'm desperately going to need by the end of this round. So that was my move. Okay. Right. I am going to... Hmm, what, where are we, where are we? Okay, I am going to go one. 
it's going to cost me um, one, one because the Sultan, his worker, is there and to be in his presence. I'm going to do the secondary action first, which is to spend a coin to purchase this sugar cane, which I'm going to take and put there. Then I'm going to do the main action, so I'll lie that down, which is take three marble or wood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, one wood and it would be here one marble because I can't take any more than that. <laughs> you can chuck things out of your storehouses if you don't I'm have enough room. And all goods, so trade goods, which are these tokens flipped over, must go into a storehouse and mm -hmm. all the resources must go into a storehouse. So expanding your storehouse is also going to be quite important if you want to fulfil some elements of the game. So I'm going to move my master builder in around. So I'm going to spend two. So one, two. So this, this guy here, he's going to go, he's two free, one, two, and then he's got two costs to get to here. And he's going to build some stuff, some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And I'm not sure what that is yet. So I'm going to pay <laughs> a gypsum because he's going to do a major construction. Okay. And I am going to not take another storehouse action, or do I take another storehouse action? I am going to take this fountain here. Beautiful. Which is going to give me a storehouse action, which you know apparently is very popular with me. Um, so I'm going to spend I'm going to spend some ceramics with my gypsum. So okay. that gives me five points. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I get to take a storehouse action. I'm going to take this ceramic storehouse. Is that a good idea, Kirsty? I don't know. Um, yes, I'm going to take the ceramics. I'm going to place the ceramics I just took. So that's going to go there. I get our ceramic back. And I also get two more victory points. Mm -hmm. One, two. And that then gets flipped. I have created the most beautiful fountain imaginable. That's stunning. Kinda. So I think you've just made it so I can't do my move because I don't have enough coins to do the move and the action anymore. Which is kind of disappointing. Um, so I'm going to have to... I've, my gameplay has fallen now. I've been on camera. Um, everything's so expensive now. One, two, that's three. Go here, it's going to cost me one, two, three. It's not even worth it. I need the coins. It's not worth it. So I can sell this for one. No, you can only buy them. Uh, sell one? No, buy one. Oh. So if it's denoted in red, you're buying, yeah, sorry, you're spending you're right. coins to receive. If it's denoted in black, you're receiving coins for discarding. So I'm going to have to spend two to be there. Yep. Yeah. I'm not going to get any money back. One, two, three. Well, you can get three coins back. Two, three. Um, I will activate this one. You need three more coins? Yep. And then um, I can do two trade actions. So I will trade one marble there for a glazed ceramic and I will trade one what do I want to do that? Wood there for a marble. There you go. Okay. So what Kirsty did was an upgrade action based in the market and you can upgrade for free. You can also downgrade a good and mm -hmm. get a coin. So you have options, always options in this game. They might not always be good options, but they are definitely options. So. Mm. Mm. I think I should have sold something instead, downgraded something instead, rather than that last marble. Because so I've got exactly the same situation with my coins. Downgrade the wood to gypsum then. So if you want to trade that marble back for a gypsum... Yeah, I'll do that instead, if that's okay. And take a coin I just, as well. I don't, there's no point in me doing it otherwise, because I'm in exactly the same situation as I was in. So, okay. 
I am going to move to here, which is an expensive move because it's going to cost me two coins. However, I am going to create a minor wonder in this world that we, within which we live. And I am going to build me a tree um, with a wood. So I'm going to spend some wood to do minor construction. I'm going to construct this one. I'm going to do it with... Uh, actually, no. I'm going to do this one. Still costs me a wood. Still gets me the blue. I'm going to do it with um, the tree and the glaze ceramic, which is a six-point move. Wow. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I now get to click this together. And we haven't talked about this bit. So when you are taking these minor um, minor constructions, you have to click them together. And there are some symbols at either end. And if you match them, the construction is in balance. And in balance allows you a, an additional action. It might be gaining resources or taking an action. So I've got the blue one, which gives me the option of taking gypsum and a glazed ceramic or writing a poem. And because it's that stage of the game, I'm going to write a poem. I'm going to spend four coins when I write my poem to write this beautiful poem. It's a wonderful verse and it goes, if you have more store boxes than your opponent, you will gain some points. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful I mean, verse. That's incredible. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, the, the beauty and poetry within that verse, yeah, I think is, is magnificent. Kirsty, it is your go. <laughs> okay, so um, I am all the way over there. I'm gonna spend lots of money. So I've got one move that's free, two moves that's free, and then one, two, there's someone here, so that's three coins to be here. One, two, three. Um, and I'm going to do a um, minor building, um, which I was going to do to show the camera. Um, <laughs> uh, and I will spend a wood and... Um, which means she's got to be doing this one, it's the only one with wood yeah. left, isn't it? And a ceramic which is a six point move. I'll put those points on. Like that, uh, which gains me this one, which is a tree, I believe. I'm gonna connect it here for a blue move. And a blue move allows me to either take a gypsum and a, a glaze ceramic or a poem. And I'm going to take uh, a poem for one, two, three, four, five coins. Oh no, it's another great poem. For this one here. Um, so I've got my two scoring poems because you can only have two per game. So my game is locked in now as to what I'm trying to aim for. I get them. Yes. So what have I got? I've got a merchant left. Um, yeah, he's not a great merchant at the moment. Mm. Mm, he's not. He's trying hard, but he's just not. It's just shipping, not great. And shipping's hard in this game. Yeah, it's on, well, on this it's specific not, game that we're playing. It's not as valuable in this game as it has been in others. In others and it's, yeah. But it's only by fine margins as well, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to take a consolidate action. Nice. And yes, I'm going to take a consolidate action. So okay. that means I get to move this to here, which gives Kirsty a coin mm -hmm. because she consolidated in the city first. So she gets some cash and a victory point for doing so. It's I'm not sure how that it, should work. It's a partnership. I'm allowing you to partner up with me. Is it? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. um, but that gives me a resource of my choice. I will take a gypsum. Mm -hmm. And then I also get uh, something else, which I can't. Oh, I get to do the second reaction here to upgrade one of these goods to a completed good. Nice. And when I take secondary actions, because I've got this beautiful poem that says, secondary actions are wonderful, and when you take them, you should score a victory point. Beautiful poem. It doesn't rhyme, but that doesn't mean it's any less beautiful. <laughs> so I think so, that's all of us moved in this yep. turn. So we'll just go through the end turn sequence. There's a fantastic little through. play raid. Little. But it's fantastic, it's really useful. So end of round, we take income. So for the income, we get one coin each. One, two. And in player order, we also now, for the first time in this game, because we've not left many resources, uh, many um, raw materials on the board, mm -hmm. we get to take a raw material. But you're the first player this round, so yes, you get to choose first. I am, aren't I? So I will take a... Um, I'll 
will take a clay. And I will take... I'll take a sugar, because by taking a sugar, mm. my workshop is already full of sugar. So I don't actually take the sugar off the board, I actually process the sugar I've got there into refined sugar. Beautiful. Um, um, and then we take a, a good of our choice. I'll take a wood. Um, it's between wood, gypsum or marble. Um, I will take a marble, I think. Okay. Let's go there. Um, so that's all of all our income incomes done, here. Yeah. Uh, then we go to the narrator, and he, we advance the narrator token one space to the right. Done. Okay. We score the Sultan's wishes. Um, we don't have any to score this turn, so okay. that's fine. Uh, we play the number of pariahs required. To Five. Tribute. So, what are you going to do, Phil? So I'm going to spend one. How many have we got there? Three. So one, I've got two, two, three. I've got two seals, which I will spend. Mm -hmm. Four, um, five. Four, five. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. So Chris is still on top, so she will get to choose the first player. Next thing is we reactivate the workers, so they all wake up after their little nap. Come on, guys. Wake up. Come on. Like so. Time to go to work. Then the gold, so the Sultan's workers move on clockwise one space. And then finally, that one's a bit drunk. Yeah, he's, um, he's, had, he's been uh, <laughs> using the coins that have been spent to... Really? Uh, uh, and then finally, we top up any resources that are empty everywhere. Do you want to do that side of the board? Yeah. And I'll also put some tokens out. Should we put this one around the right way? Like that. Uh, we've got three poems here still. This section doesn't get topped up. It's just those there. Yeah, and that gives us nearly to, so the last thing to do is to decide who's the first player and because Kirsty's still on top she gets to pick um i'll decide after we've talked because i want to think about whether i want to go first <laughs> <laughs> okay firstly i think we have some discussions to have yes so um as you know these good the bad and the videos follow a fairly particular and fairly standard format so Kirsty, sabika what are your goods Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's really, <laughs> really lovely. The, there's, so obviously, um, German P Milan is the um, designer behind this. And obviously, he's famously known for Bitoku. And as you're playing this game, you can feel elements of Bitoku. Yeah, it's a bit of connected so, DNA almost. For example, the shipping track feels very similar to the pilgrim track yep. at the top because you're leaving boats behind, whereas you leave pilgrims, and you're gaining a benefit from yeah. them. Um, the where, minor constructions feel very similar to the Botoku track that yes, comes out the side. Do. Yes, um, right. yes, Botu and also the fact that when you connect them, the two matching halves, is similar to the um, spirits and yeah. dragonflies. Maybe. Like. Yeah, the bits that connect. Uh, and then you get their instant powers. So there's so, like, as you said, DNA that flows through and it's it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. The, the artwork is stunning. It's there, it's thematic, but it's not too in your face. It's not too busy. No, which is which nice. Is, I'll be honest, I think a little bit nicer than Batoku because, I mean, as stunning, I mean, the, like, there's no challenge that the artwork on Batoku is fantastic. But that initial view of that board on Botoku oh, is wow. is just, it's a mind-boggling kaleidoscope of rainbows <laughs> and it's really hard to get your head around. This was much more, it's a much cleaner gra graphic design, yeah. much cleaner graphic design. But completely different games, so yeah. that's fine. Well, let's no, get off the, let's get off the Botoku yeah. bandwagon so then and move on. That, to <laughs> me, you can feel essences of it. You can feel that, I really like that mechanic, what can I do with it? Yeah. And you can see it's gone from there. Then, like, we took components. The component quality has done it. Admittedly, these have got stickers on. And, like, I was going to say we. Phil spent hours applying those. And the, the They're still not the perfect, to be fair. No, but 
I've seen better, but I've seen worse. Um, the, and the, it's really like, there could have just been a simple meeple, but it's a really nice attention to detail that each piece is unique because if they fall over, you know where they've got to go back to. Yes, you do. Um, you know, it's, I love the complexity about this game. Okay. The, oh my God, I want to be in eight different places at the same time. How can I make it most effect, you know, efficiently and effectively the best use of my turn each time? And that effect, I think that is just one of, I think I, from playing Batoku and this, I think that actually, I think that might be a trait of, of his games going forward because these are both the same. But this is, I'd say this is slightly more complex than Batoku. Yeah, I think um, I agree And with I feel that, that you'd probably um, go from Batoku to this, but this is just, oh, it's, it's a delight. It's an absolute delight to play. Um, I love the fact that you can chain your moves. So you can build a construction, and that construction then pushes you up the um, Sultan's Favour track, which gives you benefits, which then helps you do your next item. But whilst you're also doing it, you gain other benefits or other chances. So on the back of these, you can see I've done um, shipping moves, I've done a storehouse, I've done gain a resource and upgrade a resource, um, I've done the consolidations twice. Rather than just doing it as one move, I've tried to make the most of the game. And this is what this game does so well. It makes you push yourself. I think that's and I, I thoroughly enjoy that. Okay, so I'll jump onto my goods if that's okay. Yes. yes, yes okay, yes. so there's a couple of things. One, I've already mentioned the graphic design. And when you first look at the board, there's a lot going on, and I don't, no one's going to argue with that. But great thought and consideration has gone into presenting everything you need to know on this board. Mm. Now, there is a reference card. We use it for end of round, end of game. Yeah. We don't need to use it for no. anything else because th there's nothing else that needs to... The to iconography in this game is clean. Is so and it's, clean. But it's also things like whenever you're spending a resource to beautify it, you'll know exactly how many points it will give yeah. you by adding it in. Um, in the market, you know every action that you can do as part of the market action here on this table. You know that I can only add one resource to a poem to beautify it, whereas to minor, major or minor constructions, I can add two. I know that if you're going to take a build action, I can spend a coin to wipe these out and replace them, and that will also give me a victory point. Like the, the iconography is really sharp, the graphic design is really sharp, that makes a busy, big mm. game, complicated game, much, much easier to manage. Yeah. So that's my one. That's one of my goods. Another one of my goods is the fact that this game has a huge amount of interlinked mechanics and mm. it's sort of like chaining moves, like bouncing yeah. one move into another move into another move. And you have to, you have to be efficient. Um, so there's a lot of interconnectedness between each area of the board. That can often be incredibly overwhelming. How do you manage that as a game designer? Well, in this instance, we've got the rondel. Smooth sailing. Yeah. <laughs> and the rondel says, you're going to take, on your turn, you're going to take um, five, uh, four actions. You've got four workers, you're going to take four actions. And each of those actions are going to be limited to how that particular worker can get around the rondel. And actually, there's only one merchant, there's only one poet, and there's two master builders. So you know at the start of your turn, there's a limit to how many actions you can take mm. and what those actions are going to be within a sort of cost basis for yeah. you. And it means that a game that should really last for like three hours because people are just sat frustrating over their moves yeah actually lasts for an hour and a half to yeah. two hours because it just flows because the rondel stops ap or it yeah. minimizes ap it minimizes yeah. that actually there's only a couple of moves i can do so i'm, I'm going to pick one of those that i think is, most yeah that, that's going to be optimal yeah. from there and that is from a design perspective for me exceptional because yeah. it, it distills complexity down to a straight not straightforward but less complex decision making, decision making in the center of the board and so you've, and so got, you've got a heavy issue euro, euro game, game here where, where it, even if you people do suffer from a little bit of ap it's not going to slow them down that much because no. they're not they won't have that many decisions to make on each action and that yes thank you that's a great bit of design um so there's some of my goods 
the the other one is the theme. I love the theme of this yeah. game, and it does it does um, overarch all the actions you take. Yes. All the actions make a level of sense within the setting that's provided, and I like that too. It's good at two players. It's good at three mm -hmm. players. We've not played it at four yet, but no. I have a, a fairly confident assumption that it will be a four player. It will be good at four. It's got a double-sided board. Double-sided board. Um, and the two-player variant setup is turn the board over and, and play the game, which <laughs> yeah, is yeah. it's nice to have a variant setup that's not like so take this out of the deck, take that out of the deck, yeah, do this to the yeah. other. So that's nice, as, that's nice as well. So you've got a very interconnected game that's managed well by the rondel. And I think mm. that's, that's a really nice touch here. So they're my goods. Any bads? So bads would be for us a reason why you don't buy the game. And Sabika's probably going to sit at around about £60 to £70, mm, I would say, um, in the country. Yeah, maybe a bit less. I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see we'll what see. it comes into. We picked this one up from Essen Spiel 2020. So, I'm really, like, I'm, I've got an ugly, mm, which I I'm not going to mention until it come, comes to the ugly. Um, but I'm, I'm struggling to come up with a bad for this one. Unless you don't like games that chain. Unless you want to <laughs> yeah. play solitaire games. Because this is nothing like that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I've got a bad for it. That's fine. I mean, it took a lot of space up in my case. I, it did take out of it. It may have pushed me over my weight limit for the flight coming home. Like, I know, I haven't, no. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really struggling for, with bads. For the first time, I think everyone at Good, Bad and the Ugly, I'm struggling for bads as well. I mean, the rule book, how was the rule book? The rule book was fine. Like, it, okay. it's it's not exceptional, <laughs> but it's really a good, it's a good rule book. I've read better, yeah. but it, it's a good rule book. Um, from a bad, if there are any bads, I don't really know. Them. This is this sits exactly in the wheelhouse of the t style of game mm. I like. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I think... I'm not sure we can do any bads. No, I, I'm... Should we just move on to the ugly? Yeah, go on. Let's move on to ugly. So, when you're first getting to know this game, there's a couple of things which just... And it was just literally just slightly irritating, and it's something that you can get over because you just, you just move things and you do things. So, when there's a stack of cards here... I can't see what's required behind it. Yeah, the, it hides behind the requirement But box. that you find that in so many games <laughs> that the key is hidden behind the stack of cards. You know, would it have been difficult to have put it the way around? I, I don't know. But that's one at the top of the board. Can't you, see. You can't so, see. So, so it's you, based like, on yeah, positioning. You, it's really hard. <laughs> like that, if, if that's one of the only things I can come up with that's ugly with this game. The only other one I would suggest, and it's just getting used to it, and now I've played the game a few times, I'm used to it, is the font that's been used on the cards. Yeah. It's ever so slightly, like, Phil occasionally wears glasses. If he's reading a card, he'll put his glasses on just to make sure he can definitely read it. Yeah. And, but then again, it goes with the theme, it goes with the style. You know, it's not that horrendous, you know, we've seen worse in games. Um, it's just... If you are an occasional glasses wearer, you may need it. Yeah, I, I wear reading glasses because I got old and that's what's necessary. It happens to all of us. It does happen to all of us. Um, and this game, I'd like a, a decision I applaud, which is the choice to go for these sort of smaller format cards. Yes. Which, which means the game is manageable in size. Because if they were normal poker playing cards, poker sized cards, this the board would be even bigger. Yeah. Um, so I applaud the decision, but it does mean that the font is often a little small. And that, yeah. that is a little bit of an ugly. The iconography helps because sometimes you can look at it and not need to worry about yeah. the text. But sometimes you absolutely do need to read the text on these cards just to really get a clarity. And that, you know, well, that's an ugly. I'd say the text on the cards, the quality of the procedural English on the cards is superb. So if you read a card, it tells you exactly what's happening. And, yeah. that, and there is no... No faff. There's very rarely room for negotiation about what that no. card might mean. It, it, good procedural English, yeah. and I really like that in the game because it stops bickering and arguments and quick referencing back to the rule books. Um, and none of the cards, I think, are referencing the book particularly. And that's they like, don't need to. They, they do don't they? need to. So one ugly, the font size. The other ugly, and I don't know, I don't know if it 
was is manageable, but the board is huge, and I don't feel like the board needs to be as big as it is. Mm. Um, I think you could lose probably like I don't know a good sort of maybe you know five centimeters on each each border. Mm. Yeah, but if you've got four people playing, you need room to put all yeah, the boats. Yeah, fine, but and you've got a map of the Mediterranean here, but. I, it would be nice to have seen it in a more manageable size board because actually this board is it is vast our table is big and this board fills it we're struggling it. to fit it onto the screen yeah. <laughs> and the above yeah. but we've done it it's on the literally the very very top of the camera we cannot go any higher <laughs> so the size of the board I think it could just have been managed mm. a little bit better but then the risk then is that we end up with smaller cards yeah. so I don't know if that's a, an ugly in, in, that, in the true respect but the it's it's something that I consider because actually people are going to have to play this on dinner tables. Yes. And this board will probably come to the edge of a normal size dinner yeah. table when it's on yeah. the board. Um, so that's something to consider when you pick if you think about picking this game up. Um, but other than that, for me, they're my two uglies. Um, there's a couple of sort of finicky, fiddly rules that actually after your first play, you'll have them locked down anyway. Yeah. So it's not really a problem. Because um, I think fiddly rules, where they are really fiddly, are ones you always go back to the rule book for, and we don't reference the rule book anymore, and it's no. probably our fifth play. So yeah. I, think I well, don't remember the last time we referred to no. the rule book, actually. And I think we've been probably the last two or three plays who've not needed yeah. the rule book. So for me, that's, yeah, it's all, it's all good. Um, and so let's move on to our final thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say about Sabika as your final? Final five seconds. Five seconds. Uh, it's a fantastic game. Go out and purchase it because it's amazing. No, that, that's literally if I got five seconds. Um, so this is a fantastic game to play, you know, on a board game night with your friends. If you if you don't want something that's hev like heavier, thinkier, but not going to take four or five hours and like really overstates welcome. The Rondel, as Phil says, keeps AP at bay generally and it prevents things um it prevents things slowing down so it keeps the you know the the tempo, pace of the game good, keeps yeah. the tempo the fact that you are limited to the rounds and you're trying to score each you know each time the round changes and you know you've got you've literally got four moves once they're done they're done mm. next one and there's a there's an efficiency there's a um kind of a, a nice sense of well what will be will be about it and you can play and then it's got that instant feeling of right okay i've got it let's play again i'm going to beat you this time or i'm going to try a different tack this time and these cards that give you the end game scoring the um and there's loads of them there's lots of different ones um the yeah, there's so much replayability in the respect that which uh, poems come out, which stores come out, you know, which uh, buildings come out, which th even these are removable and interchangeable with the... Yeah. And, and there's so much variation. It's wonderful. I, it's going to be one that's going to be really hard to get bored of. Yeah, I agree. I know board games are bored, but <laughs> to get bored of, it, I don't see it happening anytime soon. So I, I agree. I think things that really stand out we've talked about them in the goods but one i didn't mention is like points are it's a bit point salary because points come from everywhere but yeah. you you really are the master of that destiny you choose where your points are coming from and you can really focus down and that's nice and it's also nice that there's so far today after five games and normally after five games if there's a dominant strategy so, uh, normally i'll have picked up on it or have a vibe that it's there well, i'll have done it or Kirsty will have really focused on <laughs> one thing. And I don't think we've found dominant strategy yet. We're no. both still trying new things every time we play the game. And that, that is special. Is the beauty of a decent, yeah, very good, of a good design. very well-made game. So it, it feels like a game that will last. It will continue to have um, good table time in the collection. And yep. that, to me, is, a, is an ultimate recommendation. Uh, like possibly an instant classic i'm not sure yeah but it's definitely a game that if you like heavy euros mm -hmm. but you you like them to play in an hour and a half to two hours then this is a really good shout um two players you'll get an hour game out in a half hour and a half two mm -hmm. hours for a three player game like you know about four player games if we get there um but what i would say is that's that the caveat there is when people know the game the yes. first the first game yeah. will be a bit slower than that but 
Uh, it takes probably two plays to really get it locked down, so I think you'll be fine. Um, and I, for me, for my personal p- position, I, c- I would really recommend this game to those who like heavy Euros but don't like them to stick around for three hours. For me, like the one game that stood out last year when we went to Essen and picked up and was such a wonderful surprise and a delight to play, and as you said, like an addition to the collection, was Imperial Steam. Yeah. And for me, this is a ringing all those alarm bells of a classic I agree. with uh, Sabika. I think it's definitely fantastic out there and some people have been saying recently on chats and things oh there's nothing really sticking out this year and i actually think it's because there's too much goodness for one <laughs> thing to really there's be a lot of good stuff out there. rising above yeah there's so a lot of good yeah stuff i definitely recommend this game and yeah if you get the opportunity to play it definitely give it a go don't give up on the first go have a couple of games and everything just slots into place and you'll be willing to thrash your opponents. Or at least try. (laughs) If you found this video useful and entertaining, please like and subscribe. We love those subscriptions, so please keep them coming. We're also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for Leaders Thank you for your time today. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.